Today, shining a light on small business. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Today, I'm joined by Zoran from Smarterlight. Hi, Zoran. Hi, Martin. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thanks very much for uh, stopping by. Literally, you're uh, on your way down to Melbourne at the moment. But uh, look, you contacted me the other day and uh, said, I've got an interesting story here. Um, we're a small business. We're innovative. We're doing some new things. And, and one of the things I tried to cover on this channel is the battles that small businesses have with innovation, with funding for innovation, and uh, you know some of the hurdles that they go through. So I thought it'd be great to have a bit of a chat and get a bit of your story. Thank you for that, Martin, and, and thank you for having me. It's much, much appreciated. Uh, Edwin and you were having a bit of a joke on the um, glow-in-the-dark watches, so I thought, oh, I better set the record straight, and because that's the old technology, and it did have something to do with, uh, you know, a little bit of radioactivity, but nothing really dangerous uh, in those watches. But today, there's zero. So just wanted to set the record straight. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And uh, of course, uh, we were talking in the context of Hunters Hill and some of the uh, industrial residue from from the last century and the century before. Um, mm -hmm. But tell me a little bit about y y yourself uh, and also about the company and about the product that you've got. Look, I mean, I'm, I'm an engineer by background, uh, been very keen on, on innovation and, and advancing Australian uh, opportunities. It's, it's, we're an amazing nation. Uh, we just got to think a little bit harder and smarter uh, on some things and, uh, and, and always been very keen to advance that knowledge that I had through, through education into applied solutions for better outcomes for, for communities and for businesses and, uh, you know, where we can save costs, uh, uh, improve environmental sustainability and all that sort of stuff. So just always had an urge inside of me to do something more. So uh, my life has been in, in corporate world, but also I've, I've ended up in, in, in pushing this particular technology and, and trying to get it implemented uh, as a value to, to the businesses um, out there and in built infrastructure. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the technology itself, because as you say, it's the next generation, if you like, of, of luminosity. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, most times when we create light now, we are sending electrons through wires to hit a filament of some form, and then we create phot photons again. What we try and do is work within the photon field. So our materials absorb ambient light or forms of light, and then they um, uh, are able to emit that stored energy uh, in a blackout for a very long time, like overnight, entire night. In fact, you will have some sort of visibility for days afterwards from a single charge. So what, what that does is creates possibilities for safety and, and other types of uh, uh, visibilities out there. Right, okay. And so is it sort of uh, um, a paint or is it a, a surface? I mean, can it be applied to all sorts of things? What it is, it's, an, uh, it's like an inorganic uh, pigment that is made, a, a ceramic pigment that is made. And uh, then we are, with our technologies, because we have the manufacturing as well as the implementation of that. So we, will be, we are able to put into any polymer or carrier system out there. So it can be a paint, it can be a polymer. Um, so you can, you, can, you can do it on a, on a, on a sheet, a, a wafer, and then you can print a sign on it. And therefore you can have an exit sign, for example, that's visible uh, in a blackout and, um, and at the same time um, doesn't need wiring to it. So um, we, do, we do paint systems, we've created pathways uh, we were very fortunate. I feel very humble. We got the, uh, to do some work at the Sydney Opera House in the under, uh, uh, waste and recycling areas, which was just amazing. And, uh, and, and what it does in, in a blackout, you, you get another way of seeing your way out. So that's the, essentially what the, what the technology does. Absorbs the light, holds that energy, and then emits it in a blackout. Right. So I guess part of the challenge then is to think about the applications because clearly it could be a, you know, appear in many different forms. Yes, yes, it can. And we've been trying to be very focused because people will come to us and say, oh, can you do me a dog collar? Can you do anything? Yeah, well, we can do anything, really. I mean, we've put it in so many polymers. Um, there's umpteen amount of products on the back shelf, you know, just sitting there waiting. But, but the key thing is actually trying to be focused. So in the world of exit signs, the, the, the industry, the built environment is always having troubles with them breaking down and all that sort of stuff. Well, we, we, we've come out, we, you know, to with a product that can, it, it saves you money. Product, there's a lot of productivity benefits because 
businesses focus on their core business. Don't worry about their signs breaking down. And and post installation, it's zero carbon footprint if it's a standalone photoluminescent sign, which is an amazing benefit uh, uh, in terms of what what the world is trying to do. Um, but we see those other benefits of productivity and, 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 and business continuity and saving money for businesses uh, as a value of this technology. Right. Um, so, so that's 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 our that's our focus. And then we do other things outside of that. We've even that road project, uh, which are which are sort of that next level that we're trying to get to. So, biggest benefit you've got indoor a building. There's a blackout, and then you, you need to get out and you need to see. So you can see a handrail, you can see a step, you can see the wall, right? So you can make your way out ut- utilizing this technology, um, and, and 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 of course the benefit of of of, of cost saving productivity and, and environmental sustainability with it. Mm, very interesting. And uh, two questions on that. The first is, if I think of the whole life cycle of the creation of the product as well as its. Uh, you know, incorporation in in, in various uh, instances and then rollout. Um, What's the total environmental sum compared with, you know, the standard electrical alternative? Yeah, so all things take energy to extract, right? So we use uh, rare earth elements, which you find in your LED lights and things like that, or your television sets, or in fact, the devices we're talking on now. Without uh, these rare earths, uh, our, our smartphones wouldn't work as well as they do. They would go flat in five minutes with the old mm-hmm. phosphors, for example. So, so we, um, uh, there's, there, there's that component of extraction. So, yes, there is a energy required, but so is for anything else we do in the world. Uh, once we do an installation, well, that's it. Uh, if it's a standalone product, it does not need any more wiring. It doesn't do that anymore. And then because we use, we're using different type of polymer systems, the ceramic can go back to the ground. Yes, it does illuminate, but it, it's just a ceramic. It's an inert ceramic that can go back to the ground. And and the and the polymer, you can, like, I don't know, one of our signs, you can make a hose out of it at the end of its life cycle. But the life cycle is, you know, we're giving 12 years, but you're talking about 30 years plus, right? If it's in indoors somewhere, you, you, it's going to outlast maybe the building, right? So it's a really, really valuable product that, that doesn't need energy afterwards. It uses the ambient energy around it for charge and, and then mm. emission of light. Right, so it's got a very good uh, environmental footprint by the sound of it. Um, very good, yes. Yeah, and clearly that's very important in the current environment, particularly with the, the, the ever-rising cost of energy. Um, but yeah. just stand back a little bit. You know, the, the, the innovation cycle that you've clearly been through um, in Australia... Um, what was it like for you? What, you know, was it an easy path? Was it a difficult path? Great question. Great question, Martin. So sometimes, you know, you go to bed and you eat yourself up because we have such beautiful things here. We don't fully apply everything that's that's possible, right? So we have we were blessed to have a, a nation with the best iron ore and great elements inside the ground in, in the ground of you know of of, of Australia. So. Um, uh, the innovation process becomes complicated because we don't extract here, for example. So you have to have partnerships overseas, even though we have it here. Now, when I look at it, I say, well, my goodness, you know, the whole field of metallurgy and, 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 and better extraction of materials, that's a whole field of innovation that Australia could grow into uh, because you've got unenvironmental or, or, or more environmental ways of extracting materials, right? We could advance that science and, and, and grow that. So, so you, you've got challenges where you've got this beautiful uh, 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 land um, with great value, yet we, we need to go overseas to get some materials and get some processes done. Uh, that's sometimes heartbreaking, but um, it is what we positioned ourselves at, you know, dig and ship type of thing. Don't want to be too harsh on that because the nation survives a mining, but it is a fact, right? We have to consider advancing that part of it. So you've got that, that's the sort of first point. And then afterwards, when we look at advancing, so once we have the pigment, then we can put it into a paint system or a polymer system and all that. We've, we've reduced the ma- ca- capability of manufacturing, consu- you know, seriously reduced it. So, you, you know, you, some of the process I do, I'm, you know, there's one machine left in the country kind of thing, right? Now, come on, we, we used to have hundreds, right? So, so it, it becomes difficult to, to, to then... It, you know, there's a greater challenge in trying to manufacture the end product as well. Yet we could do all that really, really well, right? So, so that, that there, there's some of the sort of direct, the direct line of what we try and try and achieve. Um, and then, then you've got other things that, as a nation, like we've got very risk averse, right? And when I talk about this, sometimes people think I want to hurt people. No, I don't. Safety is foremost in my head. People that know me, I'm always sometimes over the top about, hey, don't do that i can see and i extrapolate things a lot in my mind 
And I go, look, I can see an accident happening, right? So I'm forever addressing things like that. When I talk about risk averseness, we've got to take a step forward. We, we've got to be able to, to, to uh, you know, flying, flying out of space, you know, rockets are most likely going to explode. It's actually against you, the whole process. <laughs> Yet you put, put the best engineering behind it, you know, to cover that. So we are just a little bit risk, too risk averse and people sometimes at the top are not wanting to make decisions because it's risk. Um, and then therefore, you know, oh yeah, great position. I better keep quiet type of thing. I'm being a bit harsh maybe on some people, but you know, we, we could do more on that, that front. So, so that's another one. Um, then we've got like even like compliance cost and NATA labs. So when, when we do research work, I like to send it to a third party for testing. I don't want to do my own testing unless I have quality assurance principles because you can get biased, you know, you can't help yourself maybe. So I like to send that out. And well, if you look at NATA labs, I mean, they might have done a hundred tests. Now they do five or, well, um, you know, being maybe too harsh there too, but we don't do as much testing. So we know what can happen when you get some inappropriate overseas tests. We've had the cladding problem and things, right? It appears to have a piece of paper, but not really a piece of paper. So, so when you're trying to advance innovation and you come across com uh, these things where NADA labs are shutting down, whoa, how do I keep going? So that's another one. I mentioned manufacturing as a percentage of GDP is just, we got to change that. I think COVID has is, is made people realize that. But we've been screaming about that for a long, long time. We got to get capacity in this nation. Nothing wrong with importing importing things out of Asia, China, anywhere, or you know, US, Europe, where they have skill sets in other areas because you can have valuable components in something. But we've got to have our, our own stand. You know, we got to stand on our own feet on the manufacturing front, um, and then sometimes making change. Right, the human mind is set a certain way, and then trying to make that change can be incredibly difficult or you might have a, oh but that the stand old standard says this yeah but that's old that's when things were different today we can do this we've got to move forward so so that's um we are a, i think we're generally a conservative nation but we need to again it's about taking a step forward a leap forward we got to do this because we have a beautiful country great riches inside of it and we've got to do something about it you know and and and, and maybe administration costs sometimes small business compared to big business big business can handle this right they've got structures small business gets gets hammered by that so there's 10 pieces of paper again i'm not saying zero but i'm saying there's too many and and you can't you know all the pieces of paper still led to uh, uh, the cladding issue right the, the flammable cladding issue even all the paper we had it led there so I like to focus. I like my teams and everything to focus on the on the what are we trying to achieve? And and when you focus on something, then you know rather than looking at all the paperwork, right? Uh, you can get ahead much better. So you get innovation going. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's interesting because I speak to a number of uh, entrepreneurs and small business um, inventors, and and they express somewhat similar views that you know the hurdles you have to go through, the paperwork, the, the you know the red tape and everything else. Um, doesn't seem fit for purpose you know it might be okay for the top end of the town the big companies with massive no teams and major you know legal support but but down at the coalface in the real world with small business they're actually finding it very difficult because frankly they're hobbled by all of this uh, superstructure that's been put on on them and, and you know you spend more time doing the paper than you're actually doing the work right and yes. so i think there's a really important question here if we're going to take Australia forward as a more innovative uh, environment, and I, it should be, absolutely, it's critical for our future, then we need to look very hard at some of these systems and processes that exist today. Yes, agree. Well, I really, agree. <laughs> I really appreciate your, uh, y your time today. If people want to find out more about your product, where do they go? Uh, Smarterlight.com. Uh, will be a starting point. It shows all our divisions of what we do. Uh, like I said, we have we have the stuff we do with photoluminescence. We have uh, uh, road solutions, vivacity division, uh, which which uh, has a like a phone zombies, right? So if you come across a tactile, it turns red and green. Uh, uh, that, and we have our Omni uh, Omni uh, Grip as well, which does. Uh, uh, that division looks at all the markings on roads, so so bus lanes, bicycle lanes, and high friction surfaces that make roads safer to to navigate through. But uh, smarterlight.com it will lead them to you know to the rest of it. Yeah.
Well, terrific. Well, I appreciate your time today and thanks very much for uh, pulling over and uh, speaking with me. Good luck with the innovation and uh, taking the, pro the program and uh, the, the product forward. Sounds very interesting and I shall uh, watch with interest. Martin, thank you very much. And your program is great. Your analytics are fantastic. Um, I, really, I really love your work as well. Thank you. Great. Thanks for that. And uh, good to meet you. Have a safe journey. Thank you very much.